Hi, I'm Fred from the Elastic Team. In this video, I will show how the BIOS seeded watershed can be used to interactively segment 3D images. Much more details on navigation and how the method works, etc., are available from the videos further down on the documentation page. First, I'm going to load some data. These are about 10 million voxels. The data is courtesy of Graham Knott at the EPF Lausanne. And you see that we have a very nice isotropic resolution here. Now the seeded watershed relies on the seeds provided by the user and good boundaries in the data. So I'm computing some features here, which I have uh, previously experimented with and that I've seen to give me a good indication of boundary strength. As always, we can look at these features and you see that there is one, this one here, which brings out the boundaries nicely. Now I'm switching to the seeded watershed tab. As input weights, I'm choosing the set of features that I've just shown, which bring the boundaries out really nicely. And I need to say that in this set of features, boundaries are bright, not dark. The program now goes away and constructs a graph of supervoxels. This is an operation that needs to be done just once. And the advantage is that if we've done this once, we can achieve interactive response times later on to each of the seeds that we give, even when working on terminating voxels on a normal notebook. So, I need to give seeds on the one hand for the background and then for the foreground. And note that we have a bias parameter here. The idea of this bias parameter is that if we did not have it, a priori we would expect half of the picture to become green and half of the picture to, be to become red thanks to these seeds. This bias parameter lets the background seeds grow a bit more aggressively than the foreground seeds. So now press segment and I get the result immediately. Now you see that we've had quite a bit of bleeding here. So one of the membranes was leaking and so this seed has uh, well been leaking out. I can try one of two things. I can either add more background seeds and see if this will solve the problem, which in this case it seems to, or I can play with this bias parameter. But I see a different error here. So apparently these two segments have been merged. So I'm giving a different seed to this one. I could have made a background, but I want to see, let's say, which neuron is talking to that one, or perhaps talking to that one. OK, well, we can go on marking all the objects that we want. And we need to check that the things that the computer pretends are connected really are connected in 3D, which here seems to be the case. OK, so you can go on marking as many objects as you like. Let's do one more. The computer tells me it's connected to the one down there, which indeed is true. And to look at this in 3D, I can render isocontours of all of these segments. So here we go, and indeed we see the boutons of the green structure here. If there is a particular place which you want to investigate in more detail, you can also grab one of these panes and move them around to the position of interest. And this will synchronize with the orthogonal views. So this video showed how to use carving on 3D data. Carving is applicable when the structures of interest are not discernible by 
a machine learning method by itself. So here if you look at these different neurons, they have the same appearance, so a classifier would not be able to tell them apart directly. And this is why we here use the seeds, one seed per object, to get out the structures of interest. Now the disadvantage is, is that when you move to the next volume, you need to do this by hand again. The advantage is that you can very quickly produce 3D renderings or get some insight into the 3D structure, 3D structure that you have acquired. So, thanks for listening.